I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Well, good evening and welcome to the program tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am so excited about this television program because it is the first program where we are in the uh, new auditorium and set up like we are for church. Last week, uh, we had just had our youth conference, and uh, we still had all of those decorations in here. And uh, so we're set up now for church, and we had a great day this past Sunday. Now, it was an interesting day because all of the storms uh, that came through on Friday evening and Friday night uh, so many folks were without power. In fact, we did not have electricity here at the church except for a large generator, and that powered our lights and the PA system and uh, the live stream. Other than that, we didn't have any power here, and many of our folks uh, did not get power on till late in this uh, week. And so uh, this coming week, we're looking forward tomorrow uh, to uh, a, a great church service. And if you were not able to come last Sunday to the grand opening, why don't you just join us in the morning? We'd love to have you. Sunday school is at 9.30, and all of our adult classes are in their new locations here uh, in the building. And then uh, the auditorium Sunday school class, the foundation class is right here in the church auditorium. And then church begins at 10.30, and then tomorrow evening at uh, 6 p.m. And so if you did not get to come last week and you plan to, I hope that you'll come tomorrow and we'll have a great Sunday. We did have a good day last Sunday, even though we had just a few difficulties and folks were dealing with no power. Uh, we had many folks to trust Christ as Savior, and we saw baptisms both on Sunday morning and Sunday evening. And we're very excited about being in our new building. Uh, this is a long-anticipated goal. Five years ago, uh, when I actually drew this building and took it to the architects to uh, get it ready for construction, this building was the first one uh, that we drew, but we were not able uh, to get into this building. One difficulty after another, which equals God's plan and God's no God knows best, and we have absolutely no complaints but after five years and building the building in the back, which is about 20,000 square feet, and now adding this building, which is 40,000 square feet, uh, we're just excited. Uh, we're grateful. In fact, I'm overwhelmed at the goodness of the Lord. I want to say thank you again to everyone uh, that has been a part of uh, helping and praying uh, to get this building up, and we still lack getting all of our offices uh, complete, and we're still doing some work on the inside as far as decoration is concerned and things like that, uh, but we're up and running, we're excited, and we're grateful for the goodness of God. Let me tell you about a special day coming up here at our church you want to put on your calendar. It is April 16. Help me spread the word on that day, April 16. The day is called that my house may be filled. Church is at 1030. After the service, we will have an old-fashioned dinner on the ground. In fact, my son, John, uh, that sings uh, with the family, he's the one that sings bass, uh, he and I, we have a huge smoker. And we're going to smoke pork uh, brisket, uh, not pork brisket, that's beef, uh, po uh, a pork shoulder and a pulled pork. And you've never had any better smoked pork than John and I will fix for you on that Sunday. Folks in our church are bringing side dishes and desserts. Uh, we're going to have a grand time. We're going to have a great time. That is Sunday, April 16. Mark it on your calendars. Let everybody else know about it that my house may be filled. We're working to have a record day on that Sunday in our Spanish department, in our bus ministry, in our deaf ministry, and in our church and all of our Sunday schools. I'd love for you to come. Mark it on your calendar. April 16, service begins at 1030. Let me tell you where I'll be preaching in the next few weeks, uh, uh, Monday night and Tuesday night. I will be in Elizabeth City, North Carolina at the Elizabeth City uh, Baptist Church. 
Then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning of this coming week, I will be at the Grace Baptist Church Family Conference in Flower Mound, Texas. That's just outside of Dallas, and I look forward to being a part of this great family conference. I will be home on Wednesday evening, uh, March the 15th. I'll be here for every service Sunday and Wednesday. The following week uh, is a week that I'll take off for a few days of rest. In fact, uh, I'll not be traveling to preach. My family and I will spend some time together, and we'll praise the Lord for his goodness, and we'll enjoy a time of rest and then back at it uh, on the following Sunday, uh, March 26. And then on March 27 and 28, I will be at the Beth Haven Baptist Church of Sheridan, Michigan. I look forward to being in that new church for me. I've never been there before. If you live in that region, come be with us. And then April 3rd and 4th, I will be at the First Baptist Church of Urbandale, Iowa. Urbandale, Iowa. First Baptist Church of Urbandale. April 3rd and 4th. And then April 7 and 8, I will be at the I Want That Mountain Spring Circle C Retreat. That's going to be a great retreat for teenagers. And so if you have teenagers that you would like for uh, them to attend and be in the Friday evening service, the Friday evening cookout, uh, they'll stay in the cabins on Friday night. We'll have a big breakfast on Saturday morning. We'll have a great time April 7 and 8. That's at the Circle C Baptist Ranch. The following week in April, uh, on April 10 and 11, I will be at the Baptist Leadership Conference in Mesquite, Texas. Mesquite, Texas uh, Baptist Leadership Conference. April 17 and 18, I will be at the Central Baptist Church <clears throat> excuse me, of Decatur, Illinois, on Monday evening and Tuesday evening. On Tuesday morning, I will go over to Bourbonnais and preach in the uh, uh, National Revival Fires Conference at 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning. I'll finish out the month of April at West Park Baptist Church of Rockwell, North Carolina, and I look forward to all of these meetings. I'm thankful uh, for the privilege and opportunity to be a help and a blessing to these many churches across America, and always enjoy seeing friends at those meetings, and I look forward to seeing you. Well, let me get to uh, the first song tonight, and uh, I look forward to Leah uh, singing with the family. Uh, she has not been singing uh, with the family as uh, she just had a baby uh, just a month ago. Uh, little Liam Scogan Jr. was born, and he is grandchild number six for us, and we're thankful for the goodness of God, and you'll enjoy this good song that the family is singing now. one by faith. Standing on Jordan's stormy shore, I lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it. I know how I made it. I made it by God's amazing grace. God's children are leaving one by one. Passing this way and going home Signs of the times reveal we don't have very long But each one who stands upon this shore Waving goodbye as they rejoice Glory to God will leave here singing That same sweet song I know how I made it. I know how I made it. I made it by God's amazing grace. Steps 
steps that are slower now I've taken each one by faith standing on Jordan stormy shore I lift my trembling voice once more I know how I made it I know how I made it I made it by God's amazing grace standing on Jordan stormy shore I lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it. I know how I made it. I made it by God's amazing grace. I'm preaching tonight from the book of Revelation in chapter 3. I'm preaching from that passage of scripture where the Lord Jesus addresses the church of Laodicea. Now, when I say the church at Laodicea, at Laodicea, we think of a church of failure, and they were. They were known as the church of the last days. It was a church of compromise. It was a church of failure. But in this passage of Scripture, we find a wonderful, wonderful statement of hope. Hope is one of my favorite Bible words. In fact, the word hope it does not mean a wish. It doesn't mean a chance. It actually means an assurance, the word hope does. But there is a question mark. And you've heard me describe this before. The Bible talks about the blessed hope of Christ, talking about the return of Christ. The reason the word hope is used, it is an assurance with the question. And the question is, uh, when will Christ return? We know he's returning. We do not know when. And so we refer to that as the blessed hope. It's interesting as you read through the scripture, uh, the hope and the assurances that you find from the beginning to the end. I understand there is sin, there is death, there is hell, there is judgment. All of those are found in the scripture. However, we tend to major on those. Uh, we tend to focus on those. Uh, but from the beginning of my ministry, I have, I have seen how much God loves his people in the word of God and how he calls them to him uh, just up until the last moment of time. Now, I don't preach this to say to put off trusting Christ or put off serving Christ. I'm just saying I find a hope in every passage of Scripture. Some folks look at the last days as negative and terrible and woe is me and boy, we're in trouble. I look at, that, at the last days as the days of running the final lap uh, and the most exciting days and days that we'll soon, uh, uh, we'll soon see uh, the return of Christ. Now, to me, that is exciting. And I decided some time ago that I was going to live the Christian life on the winning side because we are, in fact, on the winning side. I'm grateful, I'm excited, I'm thankful for that. So let me get right into the reading of the scripture. And I want to remind you, and he does not uh, cut any corners. He does not cover uh, any of the situation of their sin. He calls it what it is. Uh, but I want you to see there is hope in this passage of scripture. And I want to relate that to us in the message tonight. I begin reading in verse number 14 where the Bible says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art, and he gives the opposite here, wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Now he said, you don't understand your situation. You think you're wealthy. You think you're well off when the truth is you're very poor. You're wretched. You're miserable. You're blind and you're naked because you're looking at material things that fade away. And I'm looking at things that are spiritual that last for all eternity. He said, I see what you need. You see what you don't need. And he makes a correction. But he doesn't end with a condemnation. 
he ends with a counseling. And so he begins with the hope here saying, I don't want you to be judged. I don't want you to be condemned. I don't want the church to come to the place of non-existence. I want the church to have revival and he offers to them hope. May it be tonight that when we look at even passages of scripture like this, we do not see just the sin and condemnation and we're anxious to preach about the judgment. and Boy, you're going to get it from God. And the truth is judgment is coming. I'm not taking that away. Hell is for those that do not put their faith and trust in Christ. And there's nothing that could be more uh, terrible than the thought of dying and going to a devil's hell. But I want you to notice he doesn't end with the condemnation. He doesn't end with the correction. But he gives a counsel to them. Him and he said, I want you to come to me and I want you to buy of me gold that is different than the gold you have. I want you to have the spiritual gold. I want you to have the spiritual life that you can find in me. Now before I read the rest of this passage and point out the hope that we have in Christ, I want to say, if you're not saved tonight, I don't care how far you've gone into sin. If you're under the sound of my voice, God loves you tonight and God gave his son that you could have eternal life and he wants to save you tonight. I ask you, I plead with you, I beg you to trust Christ as your savior. If you're a child of God, perhaps you're a part of a church that would be described like the church of the Laodiceans and, and you think you have everything the world has to offer, but there's no spiritual joy and peace. There's no spiritual assurance within your soul. There's nothing there that has spiritual value and you're cold and you're backslidden on God. I want you to know God loves you. He wants you to see revival. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to know his blessings and his love. And so I read for you what he says here. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see." Then he says this, verse number 19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He is not just condemning them for their sin. He is not just bringing judgment upon them for their backslidden condition. He is saying to them, I love you. I don't want you to be away from me. I don't want you to be in the far country as the prodigal son was away from his father. I want you to come to yourself. I want you to arise. I want you to make your way home that you may know, that you may know the sweet fellowship that you and I can have together. Let me go on. Behold, I stand in the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. You know what he's saying? I know what condition you're in spiritually. You're miserable, you're poor, you're naked, you're wretched, you're blind. He said, you are the opposite of what you think you are. Now he said, I've told you what you really are. But I don't want you to stay there. I don't want you to stay in your nakedness. I don't want you to stay in your blindness. I don't want you to live in that deception. Here's what he said. I stand at the door and knock. He said, if any man will hear my voice. He said, if you'll open the door, I'll come in. I'll sup with you and you with me. Now, he's talking to the church here. He's not talking to the unsaved, though there certainly is application for us in this passage of Scripture to the unsaved. But I want you to understand something. He is saying, I love you. Even though you're in that terrible, uh, backslidden condition, I love you. Here's what you have to do. Just open the door of fellowship. Just come back to me. Have you wandered far away from God? Why don't you sing the song, Now I'm Coming Home. The paths of sin too long I've trod. Why don't you declare, Now I'm Coming Home. I want to say four things about this invitation to open the door. First of all, I want to say there is a present promise. In verse number 20, he said, 
I stand at the door and knock. He said, I'm going to come. In. He didn't say, I'm going to come and give you another opportunity. He said, I'm standing at your door right now. I'm knocking at your door. I believe there are folks watching me right now. You're out of the will of God. You're away from God in fellowship. Now, you're a child of God. There's no doubt in the misery of your sin has, has confirmed that you belong to him. I want you to know tonight, God loves you, and he stands at the door and knocks, and there is a present promise. He is standing there. He wants you to hear his knock. He wants you to hear his voice. He is ready to receive you now. Teenager, are you away from God? Mom and dad, are you away from God? Maybe you're a Sunday school teacher. Maybe you're a deacon. Maybe you're active in church, but your heart is cold. The songs don't stir your heart anymore. The preaching seems long and boring, and you're uninterested in the preaching of the truths of God. There's a present invitation right now. He's standing at the door, and he's knocking. Now, we all know what that means. We've been in our house, and we've heard some a knock at the door, and we've said, what, what, was that somebody knocking at the door? And we hear it again. You said, well, sure, somebody's knocking, and you go immediately open the door to see who it is, to see what the request is, to see what the invitation is. The Holy Spirit of God is speaking to your heart right now, a present invitation. Second of all, I want you to notice something. Not only is there a present promise, there is a personal promise. He says in verse number 20, if any man hear my voice and open the door. Now here's what's interesting. He speaks to the church as a whole. When we begin in verse number 14, he says unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. And he speaks to the pastor and he speaks to that church. But then when he comes down to not only a personal invitation, a present promise, he says in this personal invitation, If any man will hear my voice. I may be speaking to someone tonight that would be the key to revival in your church. You may be the key to revival in your Sunday school class. You may be the key to revival in your home. Maybe your key to revival in restoring your marriage. Your key to the restoration of your marriage uh, uh, being what it ought to be. There is a personal promise. He does not say if the whole church will open the door. He said if any man will open the door. That's what Jesus says. And so we have a personal promise. I'm not speaking to someone that's your friend. I'm not speaking to someone that you sit by or sit with in church. I'm talking to you tonight. It's not only only current. He's not only there present. It is a personal promise. Then I want to say number three, it's a precious promise. He says in verse number 20, I'll sup with him and he with me. I'll sup with him and he with me. You know, there's wonderful fellowship just when we see people when we talk to folks at church before and after church and we greet someone in a store that we see or we greet someone that we see walking on a sidewalk or driving by. But here it's a more intense fellowship. He said, let's eat together. Let's drink together. Let's spend some time over a meal of fellowship. The ancient Greeks enjoyed three meals they usually ate a large breakfast, a smaller lunch, and then a leisurely evening meal, which they called supper. At this evening meal, the family would take their time. They would talk and they would fellowship. Now, let me, let me repeat those because it's important. They would eat a big breakfast, but they would eat that knowing that they were going into the fields to work. They would take a break from their work in the middle of the day and they would have a lunch uh, that would be a, just a smaller lunch that would not hinder their work but would strengthen them to finish the work of the day. Then the evening, then in the evening, they would come together for a leisurely evening meal that they called supper. And it wasn't just a time to eat. It was a time to rehearse the events of the day. And that's what Jesus is talking about Let's have supper. Let's sit down and talk about it. I love what the Lord Jesus says here. I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. 
It reminds me of the words of Isaiah when he says, Come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Here he says, it's a precious promise. If you'll open the door, I want to restore. Now, wait a minute. Who's he talking to? Is he talking to the church of Philadelphia, the church of love? No. Is he talking to the church that's still eager in the matter of teaching the Bible? No. He's talking to the most backslidden group of people. He's talking to the most carnal worldly crowd, the most carnal worldly church in existence of those seven churches of Asia Minor, often related to the church of the last days when there will be great compromise and, and all of these things that we're seeing today in worldliness brought into the church. He says to that church, I have a present promise. I'm standing at the door right now. I want to come in. I want to have fellowship. He said it's a personal promise. If any man, I don't care who you are, man, woman, boy, girl, teenager, it doesn't matter. If you want to sup with me, just open the door. I'll come in and we'll fellowship together. And then verse number 21, I want you to notice it is a powerful promise. This verse is a promise that all the benefits of salvation will be given to the person that overcomes. Let me read it. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down by, uh, with my father in his throne. The person is identified here with Christ, his heavenly father and his heavenly home. Those who come to Jesus are promised that they will reign with him and that they will rejoice with him someday in heaven and that millennial reign with Christ and then in heaven I want to say tonight there is always hope perhaps you've gone into sin tonight perhaps you think there's nobody at church loves me and my family they've cut me off because of my behavior you may think nobody cares I want to tell you tonight Jesus does care and behold I stand at the door and knock open the door just go ahead and tell him right now I want to restore our fellowship I want to have a close relationship with you. I want you to forgive me of my sin and my failures. And I want you to know that I want to fellowship with my Savior. Thank you so much for watching tonight. You'll enjoy Jeremy as he plays an instrumental as we go off the air. Make sure you mark April 16 and join us for That My House May Be Filled Sunday with Old Fashioned Dinner on the Ground.